Demon Slayer is the tale of element-bending samurai mouth-breathers which temporarily fills the everlasting void in my heart, a void that longs for well-animated action series, saturated with violent fights, and just enough of an interesting story to keep me engaged, instead of skipping it in favor of just watching fight clips on YouTube. The story is set in a fantasy offshoot of what I gather to be the Meiji era of Japan. Our protagonist, Tanjiro, is out for vengeance after a demon demon brutally murders his family and transforms his sister Nezuko. His hopes are that by tracking down the assailant, he can reverse her transformation. Although Tanjiro is out for blood, he is still empathetic toward the struggles of others, including the demons he fights against. Demon Slayer is the type of anime that likes to give many of its characters dramatic backstories. Aside from Tanjiro and Nezuko, I found the demons to be most interesting. I say this not only because of their badass powers, but because of some of their backstories, considering they're often cast as victims of circumstance who've been abused or manipulated by other demons. While there are a fair amount of demons who have become totally corrupted by their powers, there are also a fair amount of demons who abstain from killing humans and aid Tanjiro on his journey. Despite my appreciation for these demons, the backstories are fairly short-lived, with the exception of one demon who gets about an entire episode for their backstory, but this sort of thing is at most a welcome supplement to the action, which is undoubtedly the main attraction to this anime. Sadly, the same can't be said for the human characters just yet. Considering the demons have a much higher turnover rate, comparatively speaking, I assume we'll be getting much more details pertaining to the human characters in later seasons. Having said that, I felt that the human characters left much to be desired, considering the two human side characters with the most screen time were typically around for comedic relief, which in my opinion quickly wore out its welcome. The type of comedy prevalent in Demon Slayer is the spastic emotional outburst accompanied by the deformed faces. I won't lie though, I did laugh at about a quarter of these moments, but the remainder just felt out of place considering the dark nature of this anime. The scenes you're seeing now exist within an anime featuring many decapitations, moments of extreme grief as characters find their family members murdered, characters experiencing a slow and excruciating death, and even scenes where characters have to commit suicide in order to break free from a demon's spell. Now there's nothing wrong with comedic relief here and there, but you can have humor that doesn't appear to target 13 year olds. Again, my problem is with the sheer quantity of these moments. They occur too frequently and last for too long. To further prove my point, I've taken a screenshot of every one of these faces in Demon Slayer. I don't have a problem with this sort of humor in my other beloved anime, such as Soul Eater or Golden Boy, but this is the type of humor that is suited for anime that is at least half comedy, or at the very least limited to two second outbursts scattered sparsely throughout the series, like with Roni Kenshin or Yu Yu Hakusho. Regarding the action, Demon Slayer consistently delivers high-energy brawls, pitting swordsmen harnessing numerous elements, slashing lightning-fast strikes at demons with the ability to carve your body into jello cubes like the lasers in the first Resident Evil movie. They do a good job of giving the impression that characters can get killed off considering how one-sided these fights appear to be at first. There were a few times that characters who vastly outclassed Tanjiro in strength are seen struggling against mid-tier demons. I feel like Demon Slayer has potentially a bright future ahead regarding its fight intensity if later seasons can manage to escalate threat instead of falling into the typical pitfalls of having a protagonist who becomes a power sponge, like for example with Ichigo. Speaking of Bleach, if you want more of it, then Demon Slayer should be close enough to hold you over until its final season airs later this year. I don't consider this to be spoilers, but Demon Slayer has a lot in common with Bleach, so much so that I wouldn't be surprised if later seasons reveal Kibutsuji to be a Hashira who became a demon similar to how Aizen betrayed the Soul Society in order to command an army of empowered hollows in Bleach. Regarding the art and animation, I consider Demon Slayer to be nearly immaculate. This is one of the most technically beautiful anime series I've seen in a long time. They paid great attention to detail with the scenery, there's tons of particle effects flowing endlessly from everyone's special attacks, they flawlessly pull off 3D camera maneuvers, and there were times I wasn't aware 
when I was looking at CG. Of course, there was one time that it was blatantly obvious that I was looking at CG, but this scene is probably the single worst moment of animation out of the entire series. Now, the reason why I say the presentation is technically beautiful is because I don't think half of the character designs fit this type of story, despite admitting that they look perfectly fine, just for a different anime. They feel like they fell out of fairy tale, that's all I'm saying. Look at the Hashira, an elite group of demon hunters, stone-cold killers who've bathed in the blood of countless powerful demons, yet they all look like Happy Meal Samurai. I felt like I wanted the Gotei 13 or the Jupan Gatana, but the Hashira were the samurai that mom said I had at home. Now, I know the rival is the demon version of Michael Jackson, but I actually like Hibutsuji's style. He has this elegance to him that radiates dominance. He's so far ahead of the curve of being a villain that he can just delegate to demons who are easily capable of handling the best members of the Hashira. I thought the demons looked pretty intimidating and on par with what I'd expect for a story of this nature, and I'm looking forward to what the next season has to offer. Overall, Demon Slayer is a fun anime despite having an incredibly safe premise. However, it suffers because it appears to target every audience, which is fine for casual viewing, but in my opinion, this negates much of its potential. It's too violent to be an all-ages action comedy, but it features too much humor to be an adrenaline-pumping action series, which is what you'd expect with a premise such as this. They take a lot of time to pad out the story with exposition and training, but the narrative scope appears to be too shallow to spend so much time not doing the things I came here to see which are the fights. My recommendation is to watch Demon Slayer Season 1 and the movie directly before Season 2 airs later this year. It was an enjoyable anime, but there were no fights for the final seven episodes, which can be disappointing to some, and it's clearly a part of a continuous story. So watching Season 1 alone will not paint a full picture. I consider the movie to be somewhat required as it is a direct continuation from the end of Season 1 and will somewhat impact the story of Season 2. However, the movie is twice as long as it needs to be. Half of the movie was flashbacks and vapid dialogue, but the second half really pays off with a long string of intense action. Now, I'm not saying that the movie should have been comprised of action alone, but the introduction to the movie and the villain happened during the events of Season 1, so it really did feel as if the first half of the movie was just filling empty space. If you enjoy watching anime with dub, then rest assured because Demon Slayer has a good dub, so I recommend checking it out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, all I ask is that you hit the like button and maybe share it with one person. If you want to learn more about the channel or see some affiliate links for buying anime merchandise, then check the links in the description section below. My next project will be an anime movie review. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I'm planning to have it out by the end of the week. So until then, keep enjoying your anime experience.